So when I came into the NGO sector, um, although we are a, uh, an NGO, we, are, we have about half of our 1,000 organizations are patient groups, and it is cancer only, we do cancer. Um, I was very surprised at how the nature of relationships between an NGO and a company actually manifested themselves. It was, it was very much part in the corporate social responsibility. They're a nice little group, let's give them some cash and get a report back once a year and it's all done. And to some extent, there's a lot of that around still, not just from the pharma industry, but from other companies as well. And, and if I put your badge on my website, then we're all happy, and you're in my end report, you're all happy. And um, it's a transaction at the very lowest level of the last presentation, very, very much the lowest level. It's not even a transaction. It's like, we've got some money left, would you like to spend it? And uh, UICC was not going to play that game. We set out straight away, as soon as I got on in there, we wanted long-term sustainable um, partnerships with, with companies, uh, with cancer organization, with the United Nations, the World Health Organization, and to bring together collective activity around specific issues. And uh, the, the, the point that was made about um, uh, the virtual reality, that you know, find a problem and solve it, don't find some innovative you know, ideas and then throw it at a country or at an organization, it doesn't work. So we've spent the last seven or eight years developing long-term partnerships with many of the companies in here. And I feel that, for example, Novartis, we have a relationship with them, great relationship with Pfizer, another one with Sanofi. Um, some of them with the foundation, which is an in interesting model which the, the industry adopts, is that you know, the NGO relationships through the foundation because of conflict of interest. I'd much rather go for a shared value uh, uh, relationship where I'm embedded in the business model. Um, I'm aw aware of the conflict of interest and I can manage it but I'd like to be part of the three-year planning cycle through a business and understand where there's joint value, as Michael Porter very eloquently suggests we should all aim for, and that's, that's where I'd like to go. So um, UICC now, I'd say we've got about 50 partners and we work with them in different ways. Uh, but the criticism I had, and I still, we are seeing changes in this. The criticism we have is it, it was proved impossible in the first five, six years talking to one of your companies in your industry and say, would you like to do a joint project with another company in your industry? And that was a no-no. No one wanted to do that. You know? So everyone wanted to do a project related to their product pipeline, uh, but wouldn't like to get together with another company. And I found that was a bit strange, because surely if you are patient-centric, you would like to address the issue of breast cancer generically, and not only if it satisfies your pipeline products coming through. That seems quite hypocritical. But I will say that I'm seeing signs of change. And uh, the announcement of Access Accelerated, I think, <coughs> is the very start point of the industry stepping up and taking responsibility for society's problems, collectively helping to improve those things which will help you achieve your business ambitions in the longer term. So we work collectively on improving health systems around the world, and particularly where the market is growing, which is in low and middle income countries. That's where 70% of the cancer death is at the moment, and 70% of the burden will be in the next 20 years. So if you want to be where the market is, if you are patient-centric, that's where we need to work. I think about pilotitis. I, I'm okay with pilots. I think they're fine. Um, they do have an impact. The scalability is the biggest issue. You know, how do you take a pilot that works so well here and take it somewhere else? And I find it quite strange that the mentality of a corporate entity, entities that I used to work in, where we used to think five, ten years ahead the whole time, seems to think that if you work with an NGO, it's got to be a pilot. And that's unfair on the NGO. We're businesses as well. We have three-year plans. We have ambitions to grow, ambitions to have impact. So to look at us as a means to do a pilot is, again, it's a little bit insulting. There's more that we can do together. We have influence at a government level. We get into places which companies cannot get in. And we affect people thinking, and we get investment from others. We can crowd in investment into something that works. And that's one of the things I think we miss out on. So a couple of points that were made in the previous presentation. One was about urbanization. So 50% of the world lives in cities now, and it'll be 62, 63% by 2050. And the majority of that growth is in low middle income countries. So you have a, a, actually an opportunity. You've got the cancer burden is actually landing in cities in the world. And as, a, as a, uh, those of you who are familiar with cancer, it's a, a tertiary service, really. You've got to have a cancer center, treatment, radiotherapy, surgery, you've got the drugs, pathology, everything's got to be in place. So we, we put an idea around uh, uh, the World Economic Forum and the World Bank and our partners and said we think that there's a mileage in doing a long-term new global initiative on helping cities over one million population improve the cancer treatment and care that they give to their populations. And that gives you about 520 cities around the world. 
and about 300 in low middle income countries. But we made a decision at the beginning that this had to be multi-sectoral because to address cancer in cities, you need state, um, the government, the country government approval, you need the state approval, often where the budget is, you need the city approval, you need the engagement of the current health infrastructure, you need the engagement of the local civil society groups, you needed some sort of process which had the support and agreement of the World Health Organization, because they looked to that. You need to have a very clear process of engagement. And we needed a supply chain of organizations that once a city is evaluated where they are, can step in and say, we can help. We can help on that. And that supply chain or partner group had to include the pharma industry, had to include the radiotherapy industry, had to include the international surgical um, organizations, the nursing organizations, the pathology organizations. So in Davos last year, we set up this enormous, complicated infrastructure, and we went out to cities and said, we want to help you. We've signed up four cities so far, and we've completed three sets of evaluations, which take six months. And it's all transparent. The output from those evaluations, which includes about 140 people in each city, to produce an output that says, these are our priorities to improve cancer treatment and care in our city, and that includes diagnostics as well. And with that full set of evaluations, we can now go into our partners, the pharma industry, the radiotherapy industry. We have hospital building companies and say, this is what this city needs in the next five years in, into, in order to improve cancer treatment and care in that city. So Cali, Asuncion, and Yangon have gone through, and we're now gonna start in Kamasi, and we're announcing five more cities this year and we're going to get to 200 cities by 2025. And that is a great example <coughs> to get away from pilotitis mm -hmm. because we've got all the engagement of the right people and we will deliver something which is sustainable longer term because the governments are supporting the initiative and will look at the funding challenge that they will have as a result of that analysis. At the end of the day, chemotherapy is useless without pathology. It's useless without early diagnostics and so is radiotherapy, and so is surgery. Okay, so we've got to squeeze the diagnostics so we get early presentation of cancers, and then we've got to get great pathology delivered remotely through technology generally, so that when you deliver your drugs, when you deliver the technology that helps that patient survive cancer, you have a better than average chance of being successful. So this is a new initiative, and it's rolling at the moment, but I think this is a great example of where we can work collaboratively on a long-term sustainable challenge where the industries all benefit in that period of time through to 2025 and then on to 2030. It's very exciting. <laughs>